that you commit Allah will reward you with hasana why do we have to repent if you repent Allah will love you imagine by you repenting to Allah Allah is more pleased than anyone that you can ever imagine the next of the speakers for this morning session is our dear Sheikh Saeed Drage from Canada. A background about the Sheikh. He was born in Somalia, raised in Saudi Arabia, and in the late 1980s found his way towards North America. The Sheikh holds a diploma in Islamic studies as well as a master's degree in Sharia from the Institute of Islamic and Arabic Sciences in Fairfax, Virginia. Over the years, he has held several posts, including being the founder of Masjid Huda in Montreal, Masjid Aya in Maryland, the founder of Muslim Youth Magazine and the Aqsa Association. After serving as an Imam in Maryland and Calgary, Sheikh Saeed moved to Toronto and manages to balance his duties between the masjid with his travels around the world as a lecturer on Islamic topics. Sheikh Saeed Rage currently serves as Imam at the Abu Huraira Islamic Center and also teaches for Al Maghrib Institute in North America and holds the post of Chairman for the Journey of Faith Conference. So I invite to take to the podium to address us on the topic of the power of repentance, Sheikh Saeed Rage from Canada. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Inna alhamdulillahi nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu. ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد my beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, I'lamu anna khayr al-kalami kalam Allah wa khayr al-hadi hadi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharra l-umuri muhdathatuha wa kulla muhdathatin bid'a wa kulla bid'atin dalala wa kulla dalalatin finnar. Perhaps we all know the importance of the topic and the subject that I'll be addressing bi idnihi subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He Himself did not give us a choice whether we should repent or walk without repentance. Rather, he said to the believers, O who you believe, ya you alladina amanu tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. O who you believe, repent to your Lord a sincere repentance. However, brothers and sisters, since we know the rulings of the repentance itself, I like to look at it from a different angle and see some of the fruits that a lot of people may overlook. And I want you to imagine with me 
the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And by the way, unless you release your imagination, unless you pretend that you are with the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, looking at his companion, looking at the face of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, in your mind, looking at the face of Umar bin Khattab, looking at the face of Dujana, looking at the faces of the Sahaba, unless you have that in mind, you may not grasp or benefit from the following hadith to the fullest. Now imagine the Messenger of Allah sitting and Abu Dar, Abu Dar, I'm sorry, reporting this hadith. And he said, the Messenger of Allah said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Indeed, I know the last man who will enter paradise and the last man who will come out of hellfire. Now the Sahaba, obviously, now they want to know what are, who are these individuals. And then the Messenger of Allah painted the picture of the individual who would enter paradise and he explained to them and he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say to the angels, and again, imagine yourself on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah and Allah is talking about you. Allah will say to the angels, address my servant and present all his deeds to him and start with the minor sins and hide his major sins from him. So the man will come to the podium and the rest of the creation are looking at him, waiting whether he's going to be from the people of the right or from the people billah of the left. So the angels will say to him, have you committed this sin on that day, in that, on that place, with those individuals? And the man will say yes. And they will say to him, and did you do this yawmi kada, wa kada, wa kada? And he will say yes. Qala nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he is so concerned about the major sins that he did. In his mind he's thinking, subhanallah, all this is about minor sins that I committed. The look that I gave my brother. An action that I did. A kalima that I said that you consider to be minor and this is how Allah is treating me and the angels of Allah is questioning, are questioning me. Qala wa huwa mushfiq and he's concerned about the major sins. And when his minor sins are all over, the angels will say, for every minor sin that you commit, Allah will reward you with hasana. Subhanallah. Not with punishment. Not with every sin that you commit, Allah will punish you in hellfire for a day or a year. No. For every minor sin, Allah will reward you for one hasana. If you came to the podium and you have one hundred thousand minor sins, then the angels would say, walk away with 100 hasanat. And the man would say, Ay Rabbi, oh my Lord, I have committed sins that they're not here. He will to become, he will become greedy. He's saying to Allah, forget about the minor sins. If you're going to reward me hasana for every minor sins, what about the major sins that I did? What about the riba that I, I consumed? What about the, the, the lies that I said? So subhanallah, yaqulu abad dar. And I can see the smile of the messenger of Allah when he said this statement. Yani imagine from the mercy of your Lord. You commit a sin, I commit a sin. And he turned those sins into hasanat. And then the man will say, I want to see my major sins. What does that mean? It means the individual who committed those sins on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah, if he dies with Tawbah, then all his major sins will be 
turn into hasanat. As you know, Hadith Abu Tawil, an elderly man, very old, his back is bent on a cane, hardly walking to the Messenger of Allah, concerned about what the Messenger of Allah would say to him. And the man said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Messenger of Allah, what would you say about a man who did not leave a sin except that he committed? And there is nothing evil but that he did. The Messenger of Allah had looked at this old man and he saw the concern of this man. And he said to him, Aslamt? Did you become a Muslim? Did you accept there's only one God worthy of worship and Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah? فَقَالَ الرَّجُلُ أَمَّا أَنَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ فَأَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَأَنَّكَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ He said, for my case of Messenger of Allah, I bear witness there is no deity worthy of worship and that you are the Messenger of Allah. And then the Messenger of Allah said, then engage yourself with good deeds and don't worry about your sins because Allah will overlook. فَقَالَ الرَّجُلُ And the man said, what about my major sins? What about the things that I did? And the man, the Messenger of Allah said, Allah will overlook them. فَقَالَ الرَّجُلُ Allahu Akbar Allah is the greatest. Allah is the merciful. And the old man turned and he started walking away from the Messenger of Allah repeating those statements. This is your Lord. This is Allah. Allah is not eager to punish you. Allah does not enjoy you seeing you in hellfire. Rather, Allah wants you to repent and to come back to him. And that's why as soon as you come back, he accepts you. لذلك يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم والحديث الصحيح صحاوة الباني وغيره قال لا يتمنين أقواما لو أكثر من السيئات. He says certain people would wish and desire if they commit they have committed so many sins in their lifetime. This is not a green light for you and I to commit sins, but this is to show a window from the mercy of your Creator. That no, no matter what you did, no matter what you said, no matter what type of, of sins you were involved, as soon as you make that turn and you come back to your Lord, Allah will overlook everything. Now, does that mean we should be relaxed? Does that mean we don't have to worry about anything? No. As a matter of fact, just because Allah is generous, we should not take that for granted. We should be more eager to do good deeds. Now listen to the following point. My sin would affect you. My sin would affect every single individual in this majlis and part of, who is part of this ummah. And your sin would affect me as well. And look, to the story of a man from Bani Israel. Musa alayhi salatu was salam dragging behind him 70,000 of Bani Israel from Bani Israel. 70,000. And all of them weak, hungry. Their livestock is with them. Sheep, camels, cow, whatever they have. Their children can hardly walk. Their women are so tired. Their elderly can hardly walk. And the and the Musa alayhi salatu wasalam brought these people to the desert and he said, Let us pray to Allah for a rain. And Musa prayed. And he prayed. And he prayed. But there was no rain. There was no dua that is answered. Nothing's coming down from heaven. Nothing coming down from above. فَقَالَ Musa. Musa said, Ay Rabbi, 
Oh my Lord, I've been calling you to bless us with rain, but nothing is coming down. Allah said to Musa, Ay Musa, inna fikum abd. He said, amongst you, there's one servant. One servant. Not 50,000. Not 1,000. Not 10. But there is one servant amongst you. Who's been challenging me through his sins. And because of him, you have been deprived from rain. One person, subhanAllah. Musa, he turned to the people and he said, what have you do? What have you done? Your Lord is saying, until that man comes out, it will not rain. Until he walks away from the crowd, it will not rain. فَقَالَ Musa, Musa said, يَا أَيُّهَا الْعَاصِي O the man who disobeyed his Lord, the rain of Allah has been withheld because of you. Leave. So for the rest to survive, one person, not a line of people, not a group of people, one individual. Now imagine you and I, who some of us, subhanAllah, every single day openly challenging Allah with ma'asr. And then we turn, we turn and we raise our hands and we say, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, give this ummah victory. Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help our brothers in Afghanistan, in Somalia, in Sudan, in Yemen, in Saudi, in Emirat. Help us I had to have better Iman and better Taqwa. We raise our hands. You see the day of the 27th of Ramadan. You see Sheikh today is weeping and crying. Thousands and thousands of people behind him making dua. You see them through the TV that they all sincere and crying. But at the same time, you don't see any response. You don't see any result. We, don't not, we do not see anything. Why? Have we ever asked ourselves? Perhaps it is you. Perhaps it's me. One person. So Allah said to, Musa said to that individual, leave for the rest of Bani Israel to survive. And the man, he looked into himself. He said, In kharaj if tadahat, if I walk, imagine 70,000. If I walk,